In the enchanting wetlands of the Pacific Northwest, a remarkable tale unfolds, defying the norms of avian society. Meet Wally, an American coot navigating life's currents amidst a quacking congregation of ducks. In this extraordinary tableau of feathered camaraderie, Wally stands as a lone ambassador, his ebony plumage a striking contrast to the vibrant palette of his quacker companions. As the sun dips below the horizon, casting a golden glow on the tranquil waters, Wally's presence beckons questions about the boundaries of friendship among fowl. Amidst a rhythmic symphony of waterfowl calls, Wally weaves seamlessly into the tapestry of this avian utopia. His every movement tells a story of adaptation, resilience, and perhaps a quest for belonging in this diverse community. Join us on a journey through the marshy realms of the Pacific Northwest as we unravel the extraordinary tale of Wally, the lone coot among ducks, a story that challenges our understanding of the natural world and highlights the unique bonds forged in the heart of the wetlands. In the sprawling wetlands that cradle the Pacific Northwest, American coots typically find solace in the company of their kin, drifting gracefully amidst the cattails and reeds. These waterfowl, adorned with a coal-black plumage and distinctive white beaks, are masters of adaptation, perfectly suited for the marshy terrain. Yet, amid the chorus of duck quacks and the gentle rustle of wetland flora, Wally chooses to dance to a different tune, a solitary coot navigating the communal waters of his avian neighbors. Ordinarily, coots thrive in the company of their own kind, forming tight-knit communities characterized by cooperative foraging and vigilant watchfulness. However, Wally's unique integration into a duck dynasty challenges the conventional wisdom of avian social structures. The quacks of his duck compatriots echo through the wetlands, punctuating the air with a symphony of communal harmony, while Wally, the coot with an independent spirit, floats alongside, an elegant anomaly in a sea of webbed companions. As seasons change and migratory instincts stir, one might wonder if Wally, like his duck associates, embarks on a journey beyond these mist-laden marshes. The answer, however, remains shrouded in the mystique of Wally's enigmatic life. Some coots migrate southward, tracing the sun's path to warmer havens, but Wally's allegiance to the Pacific Northwest remains unwavering testament to the mysterious allure of his chosen habitat. Amidst the feathered camaraderie of the Pacific Northwest wetlands, a perplexing puzzle emerges the enigma of the American coot who defies the expected norms of migration. As winter blankets the northern realms, one might naturally question why Wally didn't embark on the traditional journey along the Pacific Flyway destined for the warmth of the Gulf of Mexico. The Pacific Flyway, a migratory corridor etched into the avian map, beckons waterfowl to undertake a journey of thousands of kilometers, navigating from the chilly waters of British Columbia to the sun-kissed havens of the Gulf of Mexico. Yet, here stands Wally, resolute in his decision to weather the winter in the chilly embrace of the northern marshlands. The estimated distance from the southern tip of British Columbia to the welcoming shores of the Gulf of Mexico spans approximately 4,000 kilometers. This migratory route, etched into the avian instincts of many waterfowl, is a well-trodden path where the promise of milder climes and bountiful winter sustenance awaits. The question remains, why did Wally, with his keen avian instincts, 
opt for the unconventional choice of remaining in the frost-laden Pacific Northwest. The mysteries surrounding Wally's decision unfold against the backdrop of his nightly escapades. Waterfowl often migrate at night to evade predators, utilizing the cover of darkness to navigate the skies safely. As Wally's unconventional choice captures the lens, the enigma deepens, prompting contemplation about the intricate dance of avian decisions in the ever-shifting tapestry of the natural world. Can't see any ducks here in the night. It's too quiet. Let's get out of here. As the camera captures Wally's daily exploits, the mysteries of his unconventional lifestyle unfold. Is it a testament to his adaptability, a defiance of migratory expectations, or perhaps a sign of the unique bonds forged in the heart of the marshlands? The open-ended narrative of Wally's story invites speculation and contemplation, leaving viewers to ponder the intricacies of avian decision-making in the ever-changing tableau of the natural world. And now, a contemplative moment on the shifting tides of our planet. As we marvel at Wally's unconventional lifestyle, it's impossible to ignore the broader canvas of change. In a world where climate skepticism often hovers like a persistent fog, the wetlands themselves whisper tales of transformation. The delicate balance that sustains Wally and his feathered companions is under threat, urging us to acknowledge the undeniable force of climate change. Whether you are skeptic or a believer, the impact on habitats like Wally's is tangible, a reminder that the delicate ecosystems we explore are intrinsically linked to the grand tapestry of our changing planet. In the intricate dance of nature, the pursuit of love and companionship is a driving force, and for Wally, the lone American coot surrounded by a sea of ducks, this quest takes on a uniquely challenging twist. As he navigates the labyrinth of waterfowl social dynamics, questions arise about the potential for romance between a coot and his quacking companions. While the intricate web of interspecies relationships in the avian world is fascinating, the prospect of romantic entanglements between American coots and ducks remains largely uncharted territory. The diverse repertoire of courtship displays, vocalizations, and plumage exhibitions that are hallmarks of avian courtship are tailored to species-specific cues. Wally, with his distinctive coot charm, may find himself in a perplexing courtship dance with his duck confidants, yet the intricacies of their communication may be lost in translation. The notion of crossbreeding, or hybridization, between American coots and duck sparks curiosity about the potential offspring. Nature's penchant for experimentation has occasionally led to interspecies hybrids, but the genetic gulf between coots and ducks raises intriguing questions. The intricate balance of genes that govern plumage patterns, vocalizations, and ecological adaptations may produce a mosaic of traits in any potential hybrid progeny. However, the intricacies of such hypothetical scenarios remain speculative, as the boundaries of interspecies compatibility in the wild often defy easy categorization. In the annals of ornithological records, instances of interspecies breeding have been documented, but they are rare and typically involve closely related species. The unique combination of Wally's American coot charm and the vibrant personalities of his duck companions creates an alluring narrative, but the nuances of avian courtship and genetic compatibility remain an enigma in the captivating story of Wally's life. 
As we observe Wally navigating the delicate terrain of love and companionship in this avian mosaic, we are reminded that nature, in its ceaseless wonder, continues to surprise and challenge our understanding of the intricate bonds forged in the heart of the marshlands. Behold Wally, the lone American coot, gracefully navigating the rippling waters of the Pacific Northwest, but the pressing question remains, what brings him here at this peculiar time of year? As the seasons shift and winter blankets the wetlands with its icy embrace, one cannot help but wonder why did Wally choose to linger when others took flight? Could it be a testament to the intricate interplay of climate change, a phenomenon that whispers its impact through every rustle of the marsh grass? In a world where the once predictable rhythm of the seasons is now an evolving melody, Wally's steadfast presence challenges us to ponder whether his choices are merely a consequence of a changing climate, spinning the norms of the animal kingdom on their very axis. The calendar may have turned its pages to winter, but Wally's resilience, his determination to weather the cold alongside his duck companions, hints at a larger narrative. Is it a rebellion against the expected patterns of migration, a testament to the adaptability of the avian spirit in the face of a transforming world? Or perhaps, in the enigmatic dance of nature, Wally has become an unwitting ambassador, a feathery messenger compelling us to reflect on the intricate connections between the choices of a lone coot and the broader canvas of global climate change. As we contemplate the mysteries that unfold in the frost-kissed wetlands, Wally's presence invites us to ponder the profound impact of environmental shifts on the delicate balance of the natural world. The quizzical tale of this lone coop beckons us to consider whether, in the grand tapestry of nature, the unexpected choices of one can serve as a harbinger of the broader shifts echoing through the interconnected realms of flora and fauna. In the whimsical wetlands of the Pacific Northwest, a new chapter in the avian saga unfolds a tale of unexpected influence, feathered celebrities, and the fine art of avian mimicry. As the camera rolled, Capturing the daily exploits of Wally the Coot, the dynamic duo of Canadian geese swooped onto the scene, turning the marshland into a bustling theatre of winged antics. These two larger-than-life geese, strutting about with an air of avian authority, soon found themselves surrounded by a retinue of eager onlookers none more enthusiastic than Wally and his duck confidants. It was as if a feathery symphony of admiration had erupted, with the other birds eagerly taking notes on the grandeur and flair of their newfound goose mentors. Every majestic honk from the Canadian geese became a rallying call for their feathered followers. Wally, the coot with the unconventional charm, seemed particularly captivated by the larger, honkier world of his newfound companions. With each regal neck extension or synchronized waddle, the other birds mimicked their esteemed leaders, creating a comical avian echo chamber that echoed through the marshlands. In this avian theater of influence, the Canadian geese unwittingly became the big birds on campus, their every move inspiring a feathered fan club. It was as if the other birds had enrolled in Goose 101, learning the art of swagger, the finesse of honking diplomacy, and the secrets of navigating the marsh with dignified poise. As the camera crew chuckled at the feathered follies unfolding before them, it became evident that, in the unpredictable world of wetland diplomacy, influence could be as contagious as the fluttering wings of a gaggle of geese. So, there they were the big boys on the wetland block, unintentional mentors to a cadre of eager pupils, 
turning the marshlands into a state where the dance of imitation and inspiration played out in the most amusing avian spectacle. Now, let us focus our attention on the extraordinary anatomy of Wally, the lone American coot, as we delve into the peculiarities of his feet, a feature that sets him apart in the watery tapestry of the Pacific Northwest. Unlike his web-footed counterparts, Wally possesses what some might call ugly or unconventional feet, thick, lobed appendages that seem almost out of place in the elegant world of waterfowl. These stout, sturdy feet are Wally's tools for a different aquatic trade. While they may lack the sleek, interwoven membranes of webbed feet, they are marvels of adaptability. The thick lobes, reminiscent of oversized lily pads, serve as natural paddles, propelling Wally through the water with surprising agility. As he maneuvers the marshy terrain, his ungainly looking feet transform into effective instruments, providing both stability and power in a watery ballet. In the grand hierarchy of waterfowl feet, Wally's appendages might seem like outliers, yet they carry unique advantages. Unlike the streamlined webbed feet of ducks, coots like Wally can walk on land more easily, thanks to their broad, flat toes. These feet, seemingly ugly to the untrained eye, become symbols of adaptability and versatility in the diverse ecosystems that Wally calls home. Now, let us consider the contrast between Wally's unconventional feet and the webbed wonders of his duck companions. Webbed feet, a hallmark of many waterfowl, are superbly adapted for efficient swimming. The intricate membranes reduce drag as the ducks glide through the water, aiding in swift and graceful navigation. In the evolutionary arms race of waterfowl adaptations, the webbed feet of ducks are precision instruments, finely tuned for life both on and beneath the water's surface. However, in the curious case of Wally, his seemingly ugly feet provide a lesson in the art of ecological niche occupation. While ducks may reign supreme in the water, Wally's thick lobes grant him an advantage in the intricate dance between land and liquid. His adaptability, embodied in those unconventional feet, challenges our preconceived notions of avian elegance, offering a compelling narrative about the diverse strategies that enable different species to thrive in their watery realms. As we observe Wally's distinctive footwork, we are reminded that in the intricate world of waterfowl adaptations, beauty and effectiveness are found in the eye of the beholder and every quirk in nature's design tells a story of survival, innovation, and the endless dance between form and function. Oh, dear Wally, the foodie extraordinaire of the marshlands, whose culinary adventures rival the most passionate human epicureans. Our feathery protagonist, with his distinctive thick-lobed feet and insatiable appetite, has forged an unusual alliance with the human intruders armed with cameras and curiosity. Wally's relentless pursuit of the next electable morsel has become the stuff of avian legend. With a gaze as sharp as an eagle's and a determination that would make a chef on the hunt for truffles blush, Wally, the food connoisseur of the wetlands, has discovered an unconventional source for his culinary delights, the unsuspecting camera crew. With every scurry and rustle in the underbrush, Wally emerges, expecting a handout, a snack, or perhaps a gourmet treat worthy of his discerning palate. Could this unwavering interaction with the human entourage be the secret source that keeps Wally anchored in these marshy realms? 
as he stalks the camera crew with a finesse that would make a seasoned paparazzo envious. One can't help but wonder if this food-focused friendship has become a tantalizing incentive for Wally's prolonged stay. The humans, initially captivated by the lone coot's antics, find themselves in a delightful game of avian hide-and-seek, with Wally ever watchful for the promise of a tasty reward. His food-driven exploits have turned the wetlands into a culinary stage, where Wally, the aspiring gourmet, takes center spotlight. Whether he's wading through shallow waters with the grace of a culinary artist or boldly approaching the camera crew with an expectant gaze, all his gastronomic adventures add a whimsical touch to the marshy drama. In the grand tapestry of Wally's existence, it seems that the pursuit of delectable delights has become a driving force, intertwining his story with that of the curious humans who have unwittingly become his gastronomic patrons. As the dance between camera crew and coot continues, the wetlands echo with the laughter of unexpected camaraderie, proving that even in the avian world, a shared love for snacks can forge the most delightful bonds. As winter's icy fingers tighten their grip on the Pacific Northwest, a chilling reality unfolds in the marshlands where Wally, the intrepid American coot, resides. Night after night, the mercury plunges below zero degrees Celsius, and soon, even the days will succumb to the frigid embrace of freezing temperatures. The question looms like a frost-laden cloud, can Wally, with his robust yet unconventional adaptations, brave such wintry extremes. The unique biology of American coots offers a glimmer of hope in the face of the encroaching cold. Unlike some waterfowl that migrate to warmer climes, coots are known for their resilience in chilly conditions. Their thick plumage acts as a snug winter coat, providing insulation against the biting winds. Furthermore, Wally's peculiar lobed feet, which may seem an eccentricity in fairer seasons, now emerge as practical assets. They enable him to navigate partially frozen waters with a grace that defies the ice-crusted landscape. Yet, the plummeting temperatures also pose challenges. As nights grow colder and days colder still, the thin veneer of ice on the marshes threatens to limit Wally's access to his aquatic pantry. The once teeming buffet of aquatic invertebrates and submerged vegetation becomes more elusive beneath the frozen surface. Wally's resourcefulness will be put to the test as he forages for sustenance in an environment that seems determined to lock away its edible treasures. Surviving sub-zero temperatures during winter requires a delicate balance between adaptation and endurance. Wally, with his thick plumage, sturdy build, and resilient spirit, stands as a testament to the wonders of avian adaptation. As winter's grip tightens, the marshlands transform into a crucible of survival, where the unconventional coot faces the challenges of an icy tableau with a tenacity that mirrors the ever-changing rhythm of the seasons. In the coming days, as the thermometer continues its descent, only time will unveil whether Wally, the gastronomic connoisseur and resilient coot, can withstand the wintry embrace of British Columbia. The marshlands hold their breath, awaiting the outcome of this frozen chapter in the captivating tale of Wally's life. As winter tightens its frosty grip on the Pacific Northwest, Wally, the resolute American coot, emerges as a symbol of tenacity in the face of icy challenges. His thick plumage, robust build, and peculiar lobed feet paint a portrait of adaptability that bodes well for his survival in the wintry marshlands. 
Wally's resourcefulness and ability to navigate partially frozen waters hint at a coot uniquely suited to weathering the biting cold. Despite the inhospitable conditions, Wally's culinary exploits persist, a testament to his resilience and the intriguing bond forged with the human observers. As the camera crew and the coot engage in a whimsical dance of snacks and surveillance, the marshlands become a stage where unexpected camaraderie blossoms in the frost-kissed air. The hope lingers that Wally, with his indomitable spirit, will not only brave the winter, but will one day find companionship among his own kind. The possibility of a reunion with fellow coots remains a beacon of optimism, a narrative thread left tantalizingly open-ended. As the credits roll on this captivating documentary, the viewer is left to imagine the continuation of Wally's story, a story of survival, adaptation, and the untold wonders that await in the ever-changing tapestry of the Pacific Northwest marshlands.